All right. Uh, first story is on SignalFi- SignalFire's creator economy market gap. So SignalFire is a company that invests, they're, they're a venture capital firm. And uh, this is interesting because they are clearly interested in investing into the creator economy and also tools and softwares for the creator economy. They've actually invested into a few in the past. I don't think we're going to get into that in today's story, but it just the the research that they actually put into this. Um, this is one of the most cited reports that I've seen on the creator economy, uh, which I think is really interesting. Um, I know Andrew went deep into this and found a lot of interesting points. So, Andrew, take it away. Yeah, they've identified the the three top trends in the creator economy, which are creators moving their top fans off of social networks. No brainer. I mean, we've always known that email is the number one, right? Trying to get your followers and subscribers because a fan is just a fan. Doesn't doesn't mean that they're a paying paying customer, paying client, right? Uh, and onto their own websites, apps, and monetization tools. The second trend is creators becoming founders, building out teams and assembling tools to create them start. Uh, to help them start businesses while focusing on their art. Love that. And then finally, creators gaining power in the media ecosystem as fans seek to connect with individual personalities rather than faceless publishers. So, okay, so we got off the platform, so on their own websites, apps, monetization tools, that makes sense for sure. Um, I like the the bottom trend the most, to be honest with you. Who wants to engage with, like if IBM sent out a tweet would you like engage with an ibm tweet or would you rather engage with some higher up executive at ibm that, yeah maybe a IBM person, is a poor example yeah. here but you know what i mean like who wants to engage well with you, you've seen things like people engaging with like burger king versus wendy's they've done oh. a little bit of that yeah but right? wendy's has an awesome twitter though like that's that's yeah same fair. same with burger king that's why they've been they've been going <laughs> yeah. at it right yeah uh so there are some brands that are like that um, but for sure, you know, you're seeing a lot more of like the, the individual person, right? Like you see now with the, all the billionaires getting on Twitter and, and doing a little dialogue. I think Elon Musk kind of led that. Now Jeff Bezos is in there. Bill Gates got in there, you know? So we're seeing more of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's becoming more popular for the billionaires. <laughs> Yeah, and also we talked about on the last episode with like Hootsuite and um, them kind of looking like they're hiring some creators who are now creating content for their YouTube channel. So that could be interesting too, is kind of make your own, you know, it's a little bit challenging, I think, for a company to hire talent who's going to end up being the, the, the face, you know, or even one of the faces, right? What happens when they really blow up and get successful, you know, it's kind of like... You know, kind of like even like in TV series and stuff like that, right? I get, well, no, because like, because somebody blows up, becomes successful. They be, let's say they become like a little micro celebrity influencer, right? And you start off paying them, you know, what, three or five grand a month. And they're just one of your marketing t- people who are also on video, right? All of a sudden they blow up. People really like their personality and they're like, hey, you know, now, like if it was a TV show, you need the network, you need the production. You know, you can't just go and be like, well, you guys don't pay me. I'm going to go make my own show, my own TV show. It doesn't work, right? I mean, you could maybe get hired onto another show. But like in with, with this, it's like if you're a creator, you're working under the brand of, you know, let's call it the Hootsuite, you know, YouTube channel. And then you blow up and then you're like, yeah, I could just be a creator now. Why, why do I need three to five grand? You can go, to, go back to Hootsuite and be like, yo, you want to keep me around? I need, I need 20K. You know, yeah, it's about so, it's about keeping the talent happy, right? Because now, because yeah, Hootsuite or whoever it is, they own the brand, they own the channel, they own the distribution. It's like the production company that owns distribution, but then the talent is like, wait a second, I want my piece of the pie too. So yeah, yeah, you're right. That's a good conversation for the brand. Well, it's interesting because the the other approach is kind of like what Hootsuite did, where they're basically creating like a podcast network, right? And they just went down and licensed or like you know partnered with you know, creators in a sense, right? So that's kind of the other way of doing it. Um, but also a lot of companies are being started on the back end of uh, these creator-led content, right? Instead of, like I've seen a lot of creators that like started like a coffee company or like a makeup line or, you know, stuff like that, where it's like you're first a creator, you build the audience and then you could just start building out companies, right? Yeah, I yeah, recently Graham, saw Graham another Stephen creator. Graham Stephan made a coffee company. Yeah, 
Did he? Okay, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen a few creators start coffee companies. Yeah. Because you could easily like source your own coffee beans and then, you know, package it and see your coffee, right? Uh, I saw like the Nelk boys, I followed them. They're now, they started their own alcohol brand. Now they're doing their oh, own do supplement they? brand. Uh-huh. Yeah, they've got Happy Dad as their 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 seltzer. Oh, but right. now they're launching their own supplements. And they just partnered with a company that has USD approved supplements. So they could sponsor like UFC fighters and sports athletes with yeah. their supplements. I'm sure it's gonna be very successful. Um, I know we're I know we're going over off like we're going off on a bit of a tangent now, but like I I agree like it's a popular model like uh, The Rock Dwayne Johnson he, the whole reason why he launched his tequila brand is because he he publicly stated he's like I can't pass my acting career onto my kids. Yeah, so it's a no brainer. You, you can see, you we know, control the attention, right? Yeah, Logan Paul and uh, KSI they just started that Prime the the drink Prime. Right? Oh, did they? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a lot of that. I mean, you know, it's been clothing brands mostly. I saw like Yes Theory, they started their clothing brand. I think it's just called Yes Theory, I forget what it's called, or Seek Discomfort. It's called Seek Discomfort, I forget. Um, and then uh, originally Logan Paul had, uh, you know, the Maverick clothing brand. Um, so a lot of them have done merch, right? Merch has been the most common, but now they're starting like real companies and businesses. Uh, so. So yeah, I see that as being a huge, you know, you want to start a business and then it's like, just create. Actually, better example of this, Gary V and V Friends. So V Friends had a conference that just happened recently. And I've been seeing a lot more news and media around what V Friends is. Do you know about V Friends, the story behind this? Not really, no. You you hinted at it a couple other times, but yeah. It's really interesting. Like he really thought outside the box on this one. So he created all these characters inside V Friends that you could then invest into buying the NFT of. And what his plan is, is to create various brands that these characters carry. Kind of like, you know, all these like, you know, Kellogg's has like Tony the Tiger and like the Leprechaun and whatever, you know, all these kind of characters. So he was, he gave me the example of like, I forget what he called it. Like if he wants to start like a, a chocolate bar, Right, he could have the NFT of, you know, Chippy the Chocolate Man, or I just made that up. I have no idea what. <laughs> he gave better examples than that. Chippy right? the Chocolate and then, Man. I want me some Chippy the Chocolate Man. Yeah, but then start a whole brand around it. But then what happens is because he has this whole community of people who bought, invested into the NFTs, they're all going to support that business and share about it and buy the product and talk about it. Because if that business becomes successful, they all become successful, right? So that's just another way of, of uh, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, creating, you know, many businesses and brands. This is another kind of avenue. Of, and, and you look at what Gary Vee did. He just, he was, you know, obviously a business creator, creating content and so on. But he's really like tapped into that audience to, you know, create a, you know, both like a, like you can call it a media company, but also create all these businesses and brands. So it, I, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against Gary. Gary is like, and I, I saw him in an interview what not too long ago saying that he was and he was talking about nfts he was explaining nfts to the to to someone either the host or another guest speaker and basically uh i i really respect gary a lot i do and i love that he was so blunt he's like 99 percent of nfts are going to go to zero and i was so i was so glad to hear him say that because a lot of people are talking about nfts as as if it's like you know like it's kind of like this new gold rush kind of thing a lot of I, I don't have an nft i haven't got into nfts yet i'm not an expert on nfts but he like he there's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement around the subject and then he like full on just said in a recent interview like 99% of them are going to go to zero because he's just trying to like you know, temper expectations for people. I think. I, I mean, and he, there he is out there selling NFTs. I don't know how many people out there are out there selling N- N- NFTs like he is, but I, I wouldn't bet against him. Well, the idea is with the NFTs is some people are buying it just for the character and that kind of like that collectability of it, right? But if if the people behind it are not real entrepreneurs starting real businesses behind this, it's obviously going to die, right? Uh, so there's going to be a lot of scams out there. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, they're talking about a lot of these NFTs are going to like crash by like ninety percent this year, you know, whatever, right? So oh, there's already been a huge crash. <laughs> there's already been a huge crash this year. But now with uh, Twitter recently implemented their um, NFT verification. So now if you have your own NFT, your profile picture changes into uh, like a octagon or, you know, whatever shape, uh, which will verify you actually own it, which might, you know, help, uh, you know, give some more 
credibility to people who actually invest in these more expensive NFTs. It's kind of oh, like cool. the Ferrari of the web, of the web, right? But I mean, the point being here is it's just like about creators becoming founders and, and starting real businesses. So I think the idea of moving off social network to your website, maybe your own mobile app, and also when I say monetization tools, I mean, it's email. Right, you get you get your users' email addresses or phone numbers. You know, community.com was a really big, right? So people want want to do the whole SMS thing. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that one. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I think it's good, but I, I did subscribe to a few of them, and they're kind of pointless. Um, getting these text, I don't like getting text messages and, inter and being interrupted. I like emails. Um, yeah, the founders part, and then this whole media ecosystem, which I know you talk a lot about, like having a brand that has multiple channels or a podcast network and you know really becoming a media company well it's, so. it's it's all about controlling the attention at the end of the day that's what brands and business professionals and entrepreneurs care about is controlling the attention i i really i mean what we're highlighting here is that uh money goes where the attention no how's the saying money goes where attention flows or the other way around i love i love what it says right here more than 50 million people around the world consider themselves creators despite the creator economy only being a, a decade born a decade ago it's become the fastest growing type of small business. And I love that because that gives people flexibility in how they can generate revenue for themselves. And a survey found that more American kids today want to be a YouTube star, 29%, versus an astronaut, 11%. Matt, did you ever want to be an astronaut when you were a kid? No, I think the astronaut <laughs> thing seemed a little bit scary to me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I wanted, wanted to be. I a wanted to be a firefighter. That was my thing. I didn't want to. I be wanted to be a garbage man. A garbage man, because like you know how they get right, to hang on the back of the. Yeah, they get to hang on the back of the garbage truck. And oh, the you, you just be fun want to hang on the garbage. You just want yeah, to so outside. Said, <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to hang on the back of the truck, and then I, one of my mom's friends, I remember saying, "Well, you know, they actually get paid pretty well." I'm like, "Perfect! I want to be a garbage man." That's what I, you know. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you wanted yeah. to be a garbage man. That's awesome.